Weapon Masteries are the new feature martial classes are going to be able to take in the new 2024 Player's Handbook for Dungeons & Dragons. Now, based on the confirmed information we do have, this does seem like this could be the answer to help solving the problem of martial classes not having enough utility to implement really good strategies in D&D combat. In this video, I'm going to talk about the seven weapon masteries that have already been confirmed and how players can best utilize them with future builds. Now, what are these weapon masteries exactly? In the new handbook, all the weapon types that we're used to, like greatsword, longsword, etc., are going to have a special weapon mastery property to them. Some properties will be on multiple weapons, but I believe each weapon will only have one. And you will unlock this property that happens every time you attack with this weapon by selecting that weapon type as your weapon mastery mastery for the martial classes that allow it, fighter being the one that gets the most, obviously. So let's get into them. Weapon mastery number one. Push or knockback is one of the first weapon masteries that they talked about. Now in the video, they did confirm that it will be on the Great Club and the Heavy Crossbow, which is interesting, but it could be on more. Now essentially all this is is when you have this weapon mastery, when you make an attack roll, you'll also be able to push that enemy 10 feet. Now pushing by 10 feet is actually really important. Let's say you have your squishy character, like a wizard, in melee combat with an enemy. If your barbarian, let's say, with a Great Club and that weapon mastery hits that enemy in basically any angle, they'll be able to push them far enough that the wizard will be able to walk away without provoking attacks of opportunity. And a great club on a barbarian it makes the most sense thematically, but also mechanically. Because this happens on every attack means that a berserker barbarian could push an enemy up to 30 feet away, and because barbarians have additional movement speed compared to most other martial classes, they have a better chance of being able to close that gap and getting the most utilization from being able to push these enemies so many times. Being able to use the push mechanic more often means encounters with environmental hazards are going to be that much more exciting. Whether you're pushing enemies off cliffs or into fire or a vat of acid, it really can change the way you think about these combat encounters. Weapon mastery number two. Topple is the next weapon mastery that was confirmed to be on at least battle axes, but maybe more. Now, even though they only talked about it briefly, it's pretty apparent that this is going to cause enemies to be prone when you hit them with this weapon mastery. Now, in the video, they didn't confirm whether any of these weapon mastery properties are going to require an additional saving throw or, or skill check. But assuming that they don't, I actually thought that this was a little too overpowered being able to prone an enemy with every single attack. But thinking further on it, it doesn't really benefit you to prone an enemy who's already prone and instead might incentivize a player with multiple attacks to attack different targets and possibly proning more than one enemy a turn, setting up your allies to do kind of whatever they want. Either way, I'm excited that a weapon mastery will get to play with prone more because I think it's a really cool mechanic not enough martial classes use. For instance, let's say a player topples an enemy with this weapon mastery, and then your wizard hits them with a ray of frost, reducing their movement speed by 10. And then your ranger hits them with their slow weapon mastery, which we'll talk about next, and reduces their movement speed even more, then you could potentially be in a situation where you've reduced someone's movement speed so much that they don't have enough to stand up locking somebody in prone. Weapon mastery number three. Slow is the weapon mastery that'll be on longbows. Now they didn't go into specifics on how this slow would work, whether it takes away a certain amount of movement speed like Ray of Frost or if it halves their movement speed like the slow spell. But either way, because you're combining that with the long range of the longbow means that you could really start introducing maybe some kiting mechanics, attacking an enemy enough times before they can even reach you, or just to benefit any other ally. If you're trying to protect an NPC from an enemy, slowing that enemy down with just your longbow attacks means that NPC has a much greater chance of living. Naturally, hitting someone with a longbow means chases will be easier. And like I said before, combining this with the topple prone mechanics and some of the other weapon masteries could be really fun and beneficial. Weapon mastery number four. Vex is going to be a new weapon mastery for short swords, but when they explained what Vex was, they also showed a picture of a character with a rapier, so there's a good chance that Vex can also be on the rapier. Now what this does is pretty simple, when you hit someone with the Vex property, the next attack roll you make on that creature has advantage. I really like making dexterity based fighters, so having that many attacks that a fighter can have, almost all except the first with advantage, basically means we kind of get reckless attack without the negative sides of it as long as we're hitting consistently. But where this really shines is with rogues. Rogues now have another way to provoke sneak attack by themselves without being a swashbuckler or using steady aim. I had just made a video saying that rogues don't have enough incentive to ever go into melee range and sneak attack kind of does the same thing at range 
range, now they have a reason to get into melee, especially if they're dual wielding, because if they hit with their main hand weapon and then bonus action hit them with a dagger, they can provoke sneak attack as a bonus action attack. And that is going to synergize even more so with the next weapon property we talk about. Weapon mastery number five. Nick is the weapon mastery that's going to be on daggers. What this says is that if you have a weapon in your offhand with the light property, you can make that offhand attack without using your bonus action. Now this pairs really well with the weapon property Vex and allows a dual wielding rogue with a Vex weapon and a Nick weapon to not only give themselves a sneak attack opportunity, but also free up their bonus action to disengage out of there. Now, because we don't have exact wording, I don't know if this means that you get a free attack with that offhand and then can use your bonus action to make another offhand attack giving a rogue three potential attacks if they're like dual wielding daggers but either way freeing up a bonus action especially for a rogue is absolutely huge and completely worth having this weapon mastery in a dagger in a rogue's offhand weapon mastery number six graze is another weapon mastery that they haven't really specified what weapons it belongs to now what this is kind of seems like it's taken straight from Baldur's gate threes like Morningstar, where if you miss with an attack, you still do some damage. Now, they didn't specify how much damage that is or what calculation that damage is, but my immediate thoughts came to using this against spellcasters. If you're attacking a spellcaster and miss your attack, the fact that you're still doing some damage means that they'll still have to make concentration checks on any spells that they're holding. Now, because we don't have the exact wording for it, we don't know if this extra damage counts as an attack, so I don't know if you can maybe pump a smite into a missed attack or what, but I'm really excited to see some of the combinations with this. It just seems like the rules as written rules as intended thing might be an issue here. Weapon mastery number seven. Sap is the last weapon mastery we know about that is going to be on maces, spears, and they said several other weapons. And honestly, this is probably one of the ones I'm most excited for. Simply put, if you hit someone with this weapon and have this weapon mastery, it imposes disadvantage on their next attack rolls. I don't know if that's in general or against you. We I don't think we got those specifics, but either way it's going to make tank classes that much more fun if you're building a paladin or fighter wearing heavy armor as like a tank class instead of going the barbarian route it really makes your high ac even more effective having disadvantage against someone with already a 20 something ac is a huge benefit and really i think helps close the gap on how effective those classes are at being tanks compared to barbarians. It's really interesting because now the attack action for a tank class like that is not just a way to do damage, but now is also technically a defensive move. The amount of combinations I'm coming up with with all these weapon masteries, not just for a single class, but between different martial classes are really cool. And we don't even have all of them available to us. So let me know, what do you think about these classes? What combinations are you thinking of with right now? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to sub to the channel if you want to hear more about some of the changes happening in the 2024 handbook. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.